Hi and welcome to this new video. In this one, we are having a look at how you can use and set up various sections of your Thrive Team Builder template. So when customizing a template in Thrive Team Builder, regardless of what type of template this is, you can use the main options section from the left sidebar to choose which part of the template you want to edit. As you can see, the main options section has listed here at the top all the various parts that you can edit. And as an example, in this tutorial, I will use the header section, but you should keep in mind that whichever section you would like to edit, the options will be the same as the ones I will present in this video. So in order to start customizing any of these sections, you just have to click on the one you would like to edit. And then as soon as you do that, you will notice that all the specific options have become available for you to use. So when you first start using Thrive Team Builder, you can set up the site wizard. And if you follow the steps available here, you will get to add your own header section directly from there without having to open this editor. So if you're accessing the template without having previously gone through the wizard, then a default template for your header will be assigned here. But in this example, I've already added a header in my wizard, so this is why it looks like this. So let's go through each of these options one at a time. So right here at the top, you have the option of showing or hiding a particular section simply by clicking on this little eye icon. And then here you have the layout and visibility options that are relevant to the entire template. So here's where you can choose what type of layout you would like to use. So these options are template specific, but we are interested in the header section specific options. Okay, so let's start from the top. If you click here on this button, you will be prompted with this template library that you can use if you want to select an already made design. And as soon as you select it, the change will be instantly applied. Then you will notice that if you want to make additional adjustments, you can do so as you're currently in the edit mode, which allows you to edit the existing elements from within the header or to add new ones if you want. So these are individual elements that you can click and use them just like you would normally use that particular element that you can find also in Thrive Architect. So now let's just go back to the header from the breadcrumbs and show you an interesting thing that you can do here. So as already mentioned, you can add various elements from the right sidebar to your already existing header. So for example, you can add a global information that comes in handy when you're building your website. I've previously set my company address global field in my Thrive admin dashboard in the smart site card. And if you're not sure how to set the global fields, then you can find a dedicated article in our knowledge base. So if I want my company address in the header, I can achieve that with the help of a text element. I'm just gonna place it right here. And then I'm gonna make sure it's selected, then head over to the central style panel, open the dynamic text option, and then select the global fields as my source. And then here in the second dropdown, I'm gonna go ahead and select company address. So this has turned now into a dynamic text. Let me just adjust its size a bit and then maybe its position. I'm gonna take it from here and just drag and drop it underneath my logo. Okay, so now let's just go back to the header from the breadcrumbs. And you can see here that if you want, you can save this design for later use. So let's just quickly do that, save it to the library, and now you will be able to use this ready-made design that's located here in my saved header sections library. So after you save your header, you will exit the edit mode. So this can be easily seen if you click here on the header and this shows up. So the items are not clickable anymore and first you have to click on the edit button before accessing the edit mode that you've previously had access to. So you can either do that from here or by clicking here and then on the edit button. Furthermore, another feature worth mentioning here is the one that allows you to apply the changes you make on your custom header on all the templates on which that header is applied. So what I mean by that is that if you have here a custom header that you worked on and maybe you've saved it for later use and you're making changes to it again, then those changes will appear on all the pages or post templates on which you have that header. So you don't have to manually edit the same header, you can only do it once as long as the option from here says that this header section is linked. However, if you want to apply some changes only to this header section in particular, so from this template that you are currently editing, then you can unlink it from here. 
so the unlink option comes in handy if you want to make modifications to the header section without affecting the other templates where the same header section is used. Alright, so with this we've covered the first set of options from here. But before I move to the remaining options from here, there's one last set of features I would like to show you and those are available here in the edit mode. So if you click on the edit button, you will be taken back to this view where you can customize individual elements that are making up this header section. And on top of this, you also have this set of header options that I'm going to explain in the following minutes. So if you choose the push content option, the header section will be placed on top of the content that comes after it. And if you want to go for the second option, then the header will be placed on top of the content that comes next. So keep in mind that this means that the section will cover the content unless maybe you reduce the opacity of the background style to zero so that both the information from the header section and from the content will be visible. However, they might be overlapping. So in this case, I'm going to go back to the push content option. Next comes the vertical position set of options, so you can use this tree to align the content of the header to the top, center or bottom of your header section. Lastly, adjust the section minimum height from this slider or with the help of this field where you can insert a numerical value that you know will work for you. And on top of these specific options, you also have the more general ones for which we have separate articles in our knowledge base. All right, let's go back to the main view and the main options of the header section by clicking on done. So these three are the last ones that I'm going to talk about. And let's start from the top once more. The visibility toggle from here allows you to show or hide the header section. And it's the same one that I've shown you at the beginning of this video by clicking on this little eye icon from here. Next, we have the stretch background to full width option. And when this is active, the header will be stretched across the entire width of the screen. And the last option is for inheriting the content size from the layout. So if you deactivate this toggle, then these two additional options will become available. So drag this slider if you want to adjust the content width. And of course, you can activate this toggle if you want to stretch the content to full width. All right, so this is how you can use the options from here to make changes to your header section. Now, as already mentioned, the guidelines explained in this video can be used when you're trying to customize whichever section available on your template. So simply click on it and start using the options available here. Now, I really hope you found this video tutorial useful. As always, don't hesitate to check out other tutorials of this type if you want to find out more about Writing Builder.